hello everyone today in this video i will tell you the details of seventh cranial nerve facial nerve so today you will learn function of the facial nerve how will you examine for this nerve then how will you differentiate the facial palsy is upper motor neuron and lower motor neuron then you will learn level of lesion in umn versus lmn facial palsy facial nerve is the mixed cranial nerve mainly its motor function so the motor function of the facial nerve is it supplies the all the facial muscle for the facial expression except levator palpebrae superioris also supply the scalp muscle platysma stapedius muscle stylohyoid and posterior belly of the digastric muscle and its sensory function mainly the taste sensation to the anterior two third of the tongue by its branch coda tympani and its secreto motor function to the lacrimal gland by the branch greater superficial petrosal nerve and to the salivary gland by the coda tympani branch now how will you assess the seventh cranial nerve function so first look at the facial symmetry when the child is in rest position or when the child is crying talking to you or smiling and any asymmetry is there then ask the child to look up for it and then check the fold and wrinkles over the forehead child will not be able to wrinkle on the affected side in lower motor neuron facial palsy then ask the child to close the eyes tightly child cannot close the affected eye and when child will try to close forcibly eyeballs rolls upward exposing the sclera it is known as bell's phenomena this is the image of an adult who was having the facial nerve palsy and bell's phenomena is there i will share this link if you want to watch click this link in my description box tell the child to show the teeth if the child is having facial nerve palsy then the nasolabial fold will be flattened on the affected side and the drooping of mouth will occur also tell the child to blow or whistle if you find air leaks that means it is the paralyzed side also we have to tape the cheek when the child is blowing to see the air is leak from the paralyzed side or not after the assessment of the motor function we have to assess the taste sensation on the anterior two third of the tongue which is supplied by the coda tympani branch first we have to tell the child to protrude the tongue and tongue should be protruded throughout the assessment tell the child whenever child is having the test sensation child should raise the finger and normal child perceive the test sensation within 10 second and order of the test we should test a sweet then salt then sour then the in last bitter test and we have to apply the test substance over the dorsal surface of the tongue at the junction of anterior and middle two third of the tongue we can use the earbud for the applying the test substance if the child is having lesion proximal to the origin of coda tympani it will lead to the loss of test sensation over the anterior two third of the tongue for the assessment of secreto motor function of the facial nerve we can perform the topo diagnostic test example schirmer's test to compare the lacrimation in both the eyes in this we keep the strip of filter paper in the lower fornix of the both the eyes then amount of the weighting of the strip is measured so on the affected side lacrimation will be decreased for the assessment of salivation submandibular salivary flow test can be performed in topo diagnostic test then we should perform the corneal reflex as the efferent of corneal reflex is trisaminal nerve and efferent is facial nerve i have already explained the details of corneal reflex in my previous video on cranial nerve examination if the child is having facial nerve palsy then the blink response will not occur on the affected side now the difference between upper motor neuron and the lower motor neuron facial nerve palsy supranuclear lesion in the cortex internal capsule or brain stem lead to the upper motor neuron lesion while the nuclear and the infranuclear lesion will lead to the lower motor neuron nerve palsy 
in upper motor neuron lesion opposite lower half of the face will be affected while in the lower motor neuron lesion same side of the upper and lower face both will be affected so in this picture you can see i have divided the face into the four quadrant into the right upper lower and left upper lower part of the face if the child is having right sided upper motor neuron lesion then the left lower face will be affected four if the child is having right sided lower motor neuron lesion then the right sided entire face will be affected 1 and 2 and in left upper motor neuron lesion right sided lower part of the face will be affected 2 and in left lower motor neuron lesion completely left sided ipsilateral side of the face will be affected 3 and 4 so in the upper motor neuron lesion forehead eyebrows eyelid musculature will be spared so the child will have the flattened nasolabial fold drooping of mouth in umn lesion while the entire face will be affected in lmn lesion ipsilaterally so the loss of wrinkle widened palpebral fissure ap fora bell's phenomena flattened nasolabial fold and drooping of mouth will occur ipsilaterally in lmn lesion upper part of the face is spared in umn lesion because supranuclear innervation is bilateral to the muscle of the forehead and eyes but only contralateral to the muscle of the lower part of the face in umn lesion there will be no facial muscle atrophy while in the lmn lesion facial muscle atrophy also occur in umn lesion voluntary facial movement will be affected in opposite lower half of the face but the emotional facial movements remain intact while in the lmn lesion both voluntary and the emotional facial movements will be affected bell's phenomena will not be present in the umn lesion while it will be present in the lmn lesion corneal reflex will remain normal in umn lesion while it will be affected absent in the lmn lesion now clinical approach to the level of lesion in both upper motor neuron and the lower motor neuron lesions we can localize the anatomical level of the lesion by the characteristic clinical features and the associated dysfunctions first according to the finding of either upper motor neuron or lower motor neuron we can differentiate either the lesion in supranuclear or in the nuclear or infranuclear so whenever there is a lesion in supranuclear means in the cortex or in the cortico bulbar tract through the corona radiata or internal capsule or cerebral peduncle or in the upper part of the pons will lead to the central facial nerve palsy umn type whenever lesion is nuclear or infranuclear it will lead to the peripheral facial nerve palsy lmn type now the level of lesion in central facial nerve palsy if the lesion in cortex means the lower one third of the contralateral precental gyrus in facial area which control the facial movements if the lesion is present at the level of cortex then the with facial nerve palsy of umn type child will also have the other cortical sign example child may be having the convulsion or the altered level of consciousness etiology you have to suspect according to the onset and the progression if the child is having acute or sudden onset of the facial palsy with the cortical sign that means child may be having any infarct or hemorrhage in the cortex if onset is subacute and the disease is progressive that means may be exol intracranial space occupying lesions example tuberculoma neurocystis sarcosis or any other tumor as we know fiber of the facial area from precental gyrus descend in cortico bulbar tract goes through corona radiata genu of internal capsule medial portion of cerebral peduncle then descend to the pons so if the child is having lesion in the corona radiata then child will have the hemiplegia or monoplegia of the ipsilateral side of the facial nerve palsy so if the child is having right sided lesion in the brain then child will have the left sided hemiplegia or monoplegia with left sided facial nerve palsy 
बट द हेमी प्लेजिया विल नॉट बी द डेन्स इन लीजन इन कोरोना रेडिएटा सिमिलर प्रेजेंटेशन विल बी देयर वेन एवर लीजन इज प्रेजेंट इन इंटरनल कैप्सूल एक्सेप्ट हेमी प्लेजिया विल बी डेन्स इन इंटरनल कैप्सूल लीजन नाउ इफ द लीजन इन अपर पार्ट ऑफ द पोन्स वेयर द फाइबर्स आर डिसेंडिंग इन द कोर्टिको बल्ब ट्रैक्ट then the child will have the umn type of the facial nerve palsy with contralateral hemiplegia now the level of lesion in element type of the facial nerve palsy so lesion either in the nuclear or in the infranuclear area will lead to the element type of facial nerve palsy we label as a peripheral facial nerve palsy so the fiber of the cortico bulbar tract from upper part of the spons decussate to converge on the facial nucleus from the facial nucleus facial nerve arise it travels upward backward and around the nucleus of the cranial nerve 6 so whenever there is a lesion in the facial nucleus child will have the ipsilateral facial nerve palsy with the 6 cranial nerve palsy also having the contralateral hemiplegia due to the corticospinal fiber damage then cranial nerve 7 leave the pons laterally and with the cranial nerve 8 crosses the cerebellum pontine angle so whenever lesion at this level child will have the eighth cranial nerve palsy also also the cerebellar signs will be there so the ipsilateral ataxia will be present whenever lesion is present at the cerebellum pontine angle after crossing the cerebellum pontine angle seventh cranial nerve enter into the internal acoustic meatus from meatus to the genicular ganglion where it turns posteriorly and form the first genu and from first genu greater superficial petrosal nerve arise which supply the lacrimal gland and now to stapedius arise at the level of the second genu which supply the stapedius muscle and then coda tympani branch arise just proximal to the stylomastoid foramen which supply the taste sensation to the anterior two third of the tongue then after leaving the stylomastoid foramen it gives some muscular branches to the posterior auricular posterior belly of digastric and stylohyoid muscle then facial nerve enter into the parotid gland and divide into two main trunks zygomatico temporal and the cervico mandibular tz bmc temporal zygomatic buccal mandibular and the cervical muscular branches to supply the muscle of the face so if the lesion is present above the first genu then child will have the loss of lacrimation hyperacusis loss of taste sensation to the anterior two third of the tongue and ipsilateral element type of the facial nerve palsy if the lesion is present between the geniculate ganglion and the second genu then child will have the normal lacrimation hyperacusis will be there loss of taste sensation will be there and the ipsilateral half of the face will be affected if the child is having the lesion after the origin of nerve to stapedius then stapedial reflex will be normal and lacrimation will be normal but the taste sensation will be affected and whole ipsilateral half of the face will be affected distal to stylomastoid foramen or in the parotid gland then the lacrimation stapedial reflex and taste sensation to the anterior two third of the tongue will be normal only the ipsilateral half of the face will be affected so this is all about the facial nerve examination in next video i will cover the rest of the cranial nerve thank you so much